Welcome to Zig for the Uninitiated. I'm Tyler, your host. Let's get started. Today we're going to talk about pointers, arrays, and slices. And we're going to talk about their representation in memory. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about their syntax in Zig and how to use them, why to use them, and just get some good understanding, get our wrap our heads around how you'd use these in Zig. So First, pointers. So a pointer in Zig is like a pointer in Go and Rust and C and C++. If you know how a pointer works there, you're going to know how a pointer works in Zig. Let me orient you to a uh, little graphic here. So here we got our address space. We're going to be using for our address space a 8-bit computer. So for pretend, we're going to use an 8-bit computer, which just means that there are 256 memory locations, each one addressable by a single byte. So it starts with 0, 0, it goes down to FF. Okay, so pointers. First thing we want to know is that when we have a pointer, a pointer is always going to be pointing to a location in memory. And what location in memory? Well, usually we're going to be pointing to a variable. Um, so let's start out with a variable. For example, let's say we were doing some calculations on people's ages and we had a variable called age. You can use white. So we had this variable named age and we're gonna say age is a U8. U8 is the type and age is the name of the variable. A U8 is the same type as a byte. It's an unsigned 8-bit integer. So we're going to give it a value. I'm going to try to put all the values in green of uh, 128 years old. Very old person. Okay, we have this age. Now when we create a variable, these variables have to exist in memory. So we're going to say that our program is running and at this point in the program we're at this location in memory. So in location 24, we're going to say that that is where our memory is stored. Okay. Now what happens if we want to use a pointer? Why would we want to use a pointer? Well, let's say that this was something we're using and it was in a specific location and we want to update it or we wanted to um, use it elsewhere. Now you could pass this around. It's just a byte. That could happen. Um, and that's perfectly reasonable. But for this purposes, we're going to take a, a pointer to the age. And so a pointer to the age, we're going to store it in a new variable. We're going to call a new variable. Oh, I want to use white. We're going to store it in a new variable. And that new variable we're going to call p age. Pointer to age. And the type of this variable is the type star u8. Okay, that star represents, uh, uh, means it's, this is a pointer and that it's a pointer to u8. In general or generically, you just call us a star t. Okay, so we're gonna make a new pointer and syntactically we'd say, we're gonna take that pointer and we're gonna draw an ampersand that's a fine looking ampersand. We're going to take an ampersand, which just is the address of the operator. So it says, hey, give me the address of the variable h. And that's what ph is going to be. So what is the value there? The value is the hex value 0 x. 21 or 21 because that is the address of our variable age. Remember, we put age right here and 204, 24. Let's fix that real quick. Two four. So we put the um, pointer in 0x24. I'm going to fix that zero real quick, make it pretty. And that's our pointer. 
But remember, every variable has to exist in memory. So pH has to exist in memory. So we're going to put that in memory. For right now, we're going to put it right, uh, right after that byte. Okay, we're going to say that's pH. Now, right now we're using a byte. We'll get into why that's a byte later. Okay, let's get into arrays. Arrays are just a continuous, contiguous set of memory. Okay, and so when we have a array, we're just saying I want a specific set or a specific number of memory locations of that will fit this type, some type. So for example, if we we're going to use ages as our example, R is our yeah, example, we're going to take a variable, we call it ages. It's ages, oops, I missed a spot in here. It's the variable, we're going to give it a type. The type is going to be an array of U8s. But the thing with an array is you have to give it a specific size. So in this case, we're going to do 16. Okay. So the age is going to be 16 U8s or 16 bytes. And that's going to equal some value. In this case, we're going to put it like this. We do 7, 32, 55. Uh, 99, you know, so on. So we had 16. That would be the value of ages. And that has to exist someplace in memory. So let's put it here. Let's say we're further into the program. So it's going to go oh, right there. We're going to put it there, there. Okay. So this is our array. Arrays are pretty simple. They're just a contiguous set of memory. You're going to give it a um, size, and you're going to get back the a reference to the first. Let's cut that out real quick. OK, we're going to start over. Arrays are pretty simple. They're just a contiguous set of memory. You can give it a size, and you're going to get it back uh, an array of size 16. Okay. Now let's talk about slices. So when we have a slice. You're saying very similar to an array. You want a contiguous set of memory, but in this case, you don't know, or you don't want to specify how long that memory is. At least maybe not at compile time. Perhaps it's a dynamic view into memory. But that's what a slice is. It's just a view into memory. So let's take a look at a slice. First of all, a slice is a struct. Let me make that. That has two items in it. It's going to have a pointer and then a length. Okay. That pointer is going to point to the first element of the slice. And the length is going to tell you how long the slice is. So slices are pretty simple. If we're going to make a slice, we can make one. We'll call it my slice. And it is the type a slice. And so we're going to do open and close brackets of u8 for this example. And we can say we take our ages. And we're going to slice it using that very common slicing operator. Now let's say we're going to go from 5 through, or 2, sorry, 15. Right? So it's going to be inclusive on the start, exclusive on the end. 5 to 15. A slice is, like I said, a structure with a pointer and a length. And so we have our slice. We're saying it's going to go from 5 to 15 of our ages array. So when we look at the actual structure, what is the pointer going to be pointing to? Well, 
it's going to be pointing to the first element of the slice, which is at 5. So we have 5, and the fifth element is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to do, it's going to be at 0, x, 5, 5. And the length is going to be the number of elements in the slice, 10. Once again, my slice is a variable, so we need to put it into memory. So what are the sizes of our slice? We know that age is a 16 bits long, or 16 bytes long. We know that age was one byte. And I had told you that the pointer to age was one byte. How did I know that? Well, in Zig, pointers are of a type U size, which is, stands for unsigned size. And that size refers to the natural align or natural size of a computer or its architecture. And what that means is it's the size of a pointer. I realize I just said that a pointer is the size of a pointer, but that's because on different architectures, pointers are different size. So on a 64 bit computer, which are most common these days um, for personal computing and whatnot, that's going to be eight bytes or 64 bits. On a 32-bit computer, that's going to be 4 bytes, or 32 bits. But here I had mentioned we're using an 8-bit computer, or 1 byte. And so, for our examples, I've been using 1 byte. But in common zig and common use cases, you'll see uh, bytes being 8, or sorry, pointers being 8 bytes, or if you're working on an old computer, uh, 4 bytes. So, if we decided that for our system, pointer is a U size, and in slices, lengths are also U sizes, that means we have two bytes that we need to allocate for this. So we're gonna do that right here. And sorry, I said allocate, which is not a wrong term, but I don't want to confuse you thinking that you have to use an allocator for this case. This could be in the stack as well, in which case, that would be handled for you. Take these two for right now. Okay. So we'll say that this is where our slice is. Now remember, I slice points to the, um, to the array. And it's pointing to the fifth element of the array or the sixth element, in this case, because it starts at zero, but element five, and it's going to be, the length is going to tell you how long that is. In this case, it's 10. This goes from five to F. Those are slices. Now, I know that I kind of ran through this really quickly, but I do have an example in code. So let's look at this. In my code here, we got a, a V array, which is an array of eight U8s. We got the letters A through H because they're, we can do that. These are different bytes. Then we have our C slice, which is just a slice on that array, starting from one and going to six. And then we have a P char pointer to a character and this is this pointer to character variable you can see we're taking the ampersand it's meaning we're taking the address of the first element of the v array and then we're going to print out we're going to print out the address of the v array we're going to print out the address of the c slice we're going to print out the address of the point or sorry we're going to print out the value of the c slices pointer because remember, a C slice is just a structure. It contains a field called pointer and length. And then we're going to print out the value at the first element of C slice. So when you're working with slices, you can use this indexing syntax. Finally, we're going to look at the pointer. We're going to take the address of pointer. Or we're going to look at the pointer, the address of pointer. 
and then we're gonna look at the value of what is at that pointer. And I'd like to point out here that in Zig, when you dereference an address, or rather you have an address, you have a pointer, and you say, I wanna know where, I wanna know the value that this points at, you do a dot star. So dereferencing just means I have an, ad I have an address, show me what's at that address. So if we run this code, we'll take a look at the results here. So address V array, you see is in, um, in Zigs, just so you can see this. Zig, when you print a pointer, it's gonna print out the type of the pointer or the type of the item being pointed to. And it's also going to print out the address. So the type that we're printing here is an array of eight U8s, and here's the address. Note these last four, zero F, four zero. All these other ones are the same. So we're just look at these last four. So zero F, four zero, that's the address here. If we look at the C slice, we see that it is a pointer to an array of five U8s, or in other words, it's a slice of five U8s. And you can see that its address is 0F48. So it is eight bytes uh, past the V array, which makes sense because the V array is eight bytes long. So the C slice just got plugged right into memory right after the A V array. Now, if you look at the value of the C slice dot pointer, we're going to look at, we're looking at what the pointer holds. We see U8. It's a U8 um, at 7FF77030F41. You're like, hmm, interesting. 41. Why is why is it pointing at 041? Because remember, the pointer, the value is the value of the pointer or the address that this one is pointing to. And remember that when we took the slice. We took it from the one-th element, or rather the second element, of the array. So that would make sense. It's one byte past the beginning of our array. And if we look at the value, we see the B. But we took a pointer to the first um, element in the array. And so we look at the address of PCHAR, or rather the address that PCHAR points to, we have 0F40, which is the address of the, of the array, or the first element in the array, which are the same. Finally, we have the value at PCHAR, where we dereferenced the a pointer, and we see the A. So I know that was kind of quick, um, but I hope this gives some basic understanding of pointers, of arrays, of slices. They're going to come in a lot um, when we start talking about heap allocating. We start talking about um, stack, uh, stack frames, stacks, and heaps in the next video. Um, if you have questions, you can reach out to me on Discord. I'll have the link at the link below. As well as you can look at my website. I'll have a write-up of this on the website if you like to read through what I've talked about today. Happy coding.